With the reveal of the Gorish's devil transformations, it seems these five old hags are not someone to be messed around with. Previously, fans speculated these five old timers to be nothing but figureheads of the world government, but Oda as always let out a big loud fart straight on these fans' faces and once more proved them completely wrong. Chapter 1110 proved these five old timers have the strongest and the almightiest of bowls out of all the powerful characters in the One Piece universe. However, we only got to see a sneak peek of their powers, but with the release of the chapter 1111, the final chapter before Oda's three week break, each of the Gorishes might actually be more powerful than Luffy's broken Gear 5 transformation. So without any further delay, let's hop right into the action. Chapter 1111 is titled The Sun Shield, which might be referring to somebody shielding Sun God Luffy against the Gorishes' almighty attacks. In the color spread, we see that the Strahd crew, Vagabunk, Bonnie and Kuma are eating french fries on top of a group of jellyfish. Vagabunk is inside a submarine robot and Bonnie is using her real child appearance. She is eating french fries with Nami and Chopper. This happy and chilled out color spread is a complete juxtaposition to the madness that is about to unfold in this chapter. The chapter starts with Mars, the Pokemon Gorse, who transformed into an alien-like bird, breaking Labuffet's barrier and entering inside. Previously, it was vaguely implied Zoro beat Lucy with one final blow of his sword, but it seems, even after taking all that beating from Luffy, then again, Zoro, Lucy was still holding up. This goes to show Lucy is one tough kitty who refuses to bow down to anybody, or true warrior if I may say. But in this chapter, Oda clearly states Zoro vs Lucy has finished. Lucy is unable to move, but he refuses to fall down and then again, if getting gangbanged by both Luffy and Juro was not enough, Jinbei jumps in on the action. He uses a new fishman karate technique called Gosenmai Guara Shuto, 5000 brick shot and penetrates deep into Lucy before completely blowing him away into the abyss. Then he takes Juro with him to meet up with their nakamas. It makes sense that Jinbei had to finish the business, otherwise Juro would have taken too long having fun penetrating Lucy with his three soon to become black plates. Anyway, moving on. Big Birdie Mars arrived to the place where his cute kitty Lucy ended up. After Jinbei's attack, we see Lucy reverting back from his cat form to his normal human form. Lucy looks incredibly beat up with gallons of blood flowing all over his body. This reminds me of the iconic nothing happened moment. Maybe Oda wants us to reflect like how years ago Zoro was powerless against Kuma. The same thing is on repeat with Lucy. He is now powerless against Zoro and no matter what new attacks he uses, the power gap is so immense that there is nothing he can do about it. Once a rat always a rat, so no matter how beat up he is, as a full time rat of the Gorsets, Lucy reports mass everything he knows and snitches. Vegapunk's message will begin in 6 minutes. Mars, delighted to hear this from one of his most trustworthy and faithful rat, compliments Lucy for riding his D and flies towards the laboratory. However, right before the departure, Rat Lucy makes a final request to Mars to spare his rat brethren. I would like to ask you to spare Kaku's life, begs Lucy in a squeaky rat voice which is mixed with streams of emotions. But Stone Cold Iron Bold Mars gives Lucy a rather untasteful reply. Um, it may be difficult since I will not pay attention on what insects I will step on. Well, it seems only pimps get to decide what happens to the hoes I believe. Leaving the rat drama, the scene cuts to Luffy's side and from his iconic wild grin, he is very happy greeting Dory and Broggy. Dory and Broggy ask Luffy why he suddenly looks like the sun god that was known among the giants. But Luffy, who is renowned for being the biggest idiot, does not understand what they are talking about. Maybe if Nami beats some sense into him, he might come to a realization how big of a deal he really is. Worried, Luffy's brain might be barbecued by the giant's words, Sanji steps in on the conversation and tells Dory and Broggy to take Luffy to the back of the island. Oda then provides us with a massive map with the updated location of all characters on the island. The characters on the map are shown in a cute TV version. It seems all groups are heading towards Giant Warrior's pirate ship. Now that they have accomplished their mission of finding and reuniting with Luffy, Dory blows a horn to signal retreat to all giants in Egged Island. 
Wokery craps his big fat underpants and instinctually hurries off to attack them with a powerful conqueror's haki roar. Wokery's roar is so strong that in an incredibly hilarious way, Luffy's eyes, hat, clothes, except pants, which we don't want to see get removed, unless you like Ivankov and even his chest car are all blown away from his body. This scene has to be one of the coolest, funniest and the most terrifying things I have ever seen and the giants think the same too as Brogy is shocked to his bollocks seeing what happened to Luffy. Wokery's conqueror's haki is so strong, maybe even more powerful than Shanks that it reaches even marine battleships in the sea and as expected, some of the marines are fainting. If this was not enough, Wokery gets an erection as hard as a steel then whips out two of his fangs which he turns into big black blades which he then uses to attack Luffy with an intention of deeply penetrating him. But this penetration procedure is stopped by the two legendary giants, Dory and Brogy, who use a new attack called Savalin, Sun Shield, to block Wokery's attack. You might be wondering what the attack Savalin really means as this chapter is literally titled after this attack. Zivalin is a legendary shield in Nordic mythology who stands in front of Sun protecting the world from her heat. This makes sense as the giants also use this attack to protect their sun god against the heat of Gorosei's penetrative attacks. If one powerful attack was not enough, Dori and Brogi are forced to use another powerful combo attack called Skilza separation to push Wokri's fat ass back. Witnessing his beloved fat pig get roasted by the giants, Saturn jumps in the fray then attacks Dory and Brogy by spitting venom explosion bolts at them but Luffy out of nowhere literally paints a baseball bat and a cap out of thin air similar to how he created the sunglasses against his fight with Lucy then hits all venom bolts back. The venom bolts cause a huge explosion that engulfs Saturn, Wokery and Jupiter. Luffy, Dory and Brogy run as the three members of the five elders start recovering. Luffy astonished by the five old hags or the worldly power goes on to say they did not take any damage again, they must be immortal. Dory and Brogy add into the conversation by replying, um we have not heard of any power race that can do this. For once, it seems the entire fanbase is correct about the Gorishas and Emu being immortal, although it is questionable whether their healing abilities are a result of the immortality or some demon related black magic which Oda has yet to reveal. Anyway, moving on, the scene changes and we see montages of all groups heading to giant warrior pirate ship. Bonnie's group arrives first but they see vice admirals, Pomsky, Guillotine and Red King waiting for them. Worried that Vegabunk might spill all the beans, Moss reaches the room where Yoke is inside the laboratory and asks her where Vegapunk's broadcast room is. The scene once again quickly cuts to Kizaru and we see that he's still lying on the marine battleship. He's covering his eyes with his arm, probably due to the trauma that he figuratively stabbed his best friend right in the back and he'll be the one deemed responsible for his death even though Saturn was the one who initiated the fatal blow. Some of the marine members are worried at the unusual state of Kizaru and they ask him, Kizaru-san, please let us treat your wounds. Kizaru, who has completely lost his will to stand, let alone fight, replies, indeed, I am wounded, please just let me rest. In the last page of the chapter, marines are reporting something that appeared in the northwest coast of Egged Island. This marine announcement goes something along the line like this. Report coming in, something far larger than a giant has appeared on the island. After the announcement ends, we can see that the ancient giant robot stands up in the middle of the island. It is surrounded by fire. Judging by the way, the robot is covered in fire. It seems this robot has conquered fire, a similar feat to Sanji which is why fire is its ally and it does not burn or melt its parts. The ancient robot then goes on to mutter something. He apologizes and says, I'm sorry, Joy Boy. Interestingly, this is exactly what Junis said when he met Joy Boy, Luffy's awakened form. Unfortunately, without getting to the meaty part of why the ancient robot is sorry to Joy Boy, as usual, Oda ends the chapter with a banging cliffhanger, which I'm sure will give rise to countless theories on how the ancient robot is related to Joy Boy and what crime he committed. The One Piece will be on break for the next three weeks because of issues regarding Oda's health, probably more to do with keeping Oda healthy as a result of how young the legendary Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama died. The next chapter of One Piece will return in Weekly Shonen Jump in April. 
Thanks for watching guys. Make sure to hit the subscribe button. See you in the next video. Adios.